Welcome to Hope on Fire, relevant talk radio for young adults. Whether you're 25 or 45, there's bound to be a discussion that you care about. Our mission is to share practical ways to find God in your everyday life. And now today's host, Chris Lang. It's no surprise anymore to see movies and TV programs about the supernatural. The overwhelming success of the Harry Potter series of books and movies resulted in all kinds of shows with titles like Medium, Charmed, and even a program that bears the title Supernatural. There's even a program called Crossing Over that claims to channel dead loved ones. It's clear that the rapid growth of such programs proves that people these days are thinking more and more about miracles, about supernatural forces at work in the world. Wherever there is a genuine, there is always a counterfeit. And the supernatural realm is no different. And we will see that the whole world is being desensitized. And gradually, God himself is being marginalized and trivialized among many religions and faiths. Hello, my name is Chris Lang, and I'll be your host today on this second part of a two-part series entitled Supernatural Encounters. I want to introduce uh, my co-host today, Sabine Vittel. All of you know Sabine and um, have appreciated her ministry here on Hope on Fire. Welcome, Sabine. Thanks, Chris. It's great to be here. <clears throat> and Powerful also, topic. It, it is. Um, and it's one that, that we have definitely prayed a lot about before mm. today. Also, I want to uh, introduce our guests today, Ken and Julie Norton. Um, it's Hi. great to have you all today. <clears throat> Thank I want to tell you a little bit about this special couple here that's joining us for our program today. Uh, Ken has been a pastor for about nine years, and Julie is a substitute elementary school teacher. Uh, they recently returned from Palau in the South Pacific, right? So Correct. For those of us in the, in the world who don't know where that is. <laughs> Far away. <clears throat> it's a small place, but it's an important place because they were serving there for two years as missionaries. Uh, they also served in Thailand as missionaries. Presently, Ken is serving as a church plant coordinator for the Florida Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. And most importantly, they have two children, ages eight and six. Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's great to have you all today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Now, uh, this is an interesting uh, dynamic of having you all, having just come back, right, from your mission service just a month or so ago. And uh, I'm sure it's probably a bit of a culture shock coming back into... Uh, the Western culture uh, having been gone, even for two years. I remember when I was a student missionary in Korea, coming back uh, just after a year, so much had changed in just a year. It was a bit of a culture shock. So two years, I'm sure, um, it was it was amazing for you guys, huh? Definitely. It, it's exciting, <laughs> though. We've, we've just been really, we've really enjoyed, you know, as we're settling in, um, you know, when we met and talked a little bit about this early on, uh, just seeing the changes that have happened television wise, media wise is, is really incredible. I mean, uh, especially with this topic and I'm, I look forward for us talking about it. Today. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And having been gone, you're probably a more sensitive yeah. perhaps mm -hmm. to those changes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, let's, let's jump into this topic a bit and as, as a context so that we can, uh, help our listeners understand there may be many uh, Christians watching this program today, young adult Christians who, who may not know specifically what, what magic is or what a medium is or, or what about witchcraft? What's that all about? Uh, the, I think the definitions here will help us kind of uh, launch into the context of our discussion. Um, first of all, what is magic? And Webster defines magic as the use of means, charms, or spells believed to have supernatural power over natural forces. Magic is an attempt to play God, a bid to redirect natural forces for one's selfish purposes. Now, uh, it's interesting, the Harry Potter series um, several years ago seemed to, uh, seemed to make magic kind of a cool thing, didn't mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. Almost okay. harmless, really. Right. Kids are reading. Isn't it great? Now, you're a teacher, <laughs> and probably you've had these conversations already, having come back. I, I hear so many Christians out there thinking that this is really harmless reading for their kids, right? They, they do. And, but then it comes down to the point of what context is creating them the desire to read. Is it, is it in the end, the effect, what you really want for your child? But that's what, that's what we get all the time is, mm -hmm. yeah, my child is finally reading. He's not watching TV. What's interesting about this dynamic, though, is not only is it teaching a younger generation a bunch of concepts that uh, 
that really are quite contrary to the worldview taught by Scripture, aren't they? Mm -hmm. um, I heard one writer, Steve Wolberg, who's done a lot of research in the area of the occult and witchcraft, and he states that after studying this, this area of Harry Potter, that it, this idea that <clears throat> the, uh, the people that are in the occult are the good people, they're the wise people, mm -hmm. the people of learning, and uh, those that are, are not involved in witchcraft are the, are the boring and uninformed. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're called uh, Moogles, I believe, in the, in this, in the series of books. Uh, what do you think about that, that real kids are, are actually writing now to have entrance into the Hogwarts School of Witchcraft in England? Mm, you it's, know, not, it's not a real school, but they're getting real letters from children. Mm. Yeah, and you said that people don't know about witchcraft and magic. What they, they think they know, and it's something really harmless and fun and cute and uh, that won't hurt them on the long run. I, you know, what struck me, I think, with it is when when you see, I uh, walked into Sam's Club and my son and we walk in and they've got Harry Potter playing on the TV and, you know, my son instantly just drawn mm. to it. And I I saw it. I didn't, you know, I didn't really know what it was. And I'm just like, okay, turn away, you know, <laughs> just don't look. And then as I started processing, even the little scene that I saw, I, I have to admit to you, I've never seen it. I've never read the books. Mm -hmm. and, and I'll tell you a little bit in a, in a little mm. while why. But I just thought... I, what I did see was absolute, you know, it was darkness. I mean, it was a man training young people in, in the occult. And I thought, mm -hmm. my, I want to protect my son from, mm -hmm. from seeing that. I, I want him to know holiness. I don't want him to know what the dark side is doing. So. That's right. Yeah. And we're going to talk more about uh, the impressions God gave you in your study about this topic. So what is a medium? A, a medium uh, claims to have the ability to channel... Uh, actually, it's loosely defined as a person who is sensitive to the vibrations of the spirit world with the gift to see and hear and convey messages. Uh, there's a show, popular show on every week on, uh, mm -hmm. on one of the national sure. networks called Medium mm -hmm. based on a real person. Uh, her name's Alison Dubois, and she wrote a book, Don't Kiss Them Goodbye. Um, another world-famous uh, medium uh, is a co-executive producer of a show called Ghost Whisperer. Mm -hmm. uh, this, this person's name is James Van Pra, apparently one of the most famous in the world. But what's interesting is uh, scary, actually, uh, chilling, is, yeah. is seeing on CBS.com actually sponsors uh, a page where he can actually invite people uh, for seances and mm -hmm. things like that, which mm -hmm. happened last year. Um, so we're seeing we're seeing the media supporting mm -hmm. this 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 sort of uh, and 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 we talked about this when we were planning for our program a couple of days ago that it's mm -hmm. gradually desensitizing even believers, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I want to bring out the fact that, that you mentioned Ms. Dubois, which I, I saw her on an interview. I mean, very likable person, individual. She doesn't seem weird or anything. Right, but right. there's a likability to these characters or these medium that's very attractive and uh, mm -hmm. very appealing. And I think that's part of, um, don't you think, about... Mm -hmm. um, Kind of putting us in that comfort zone. It, it's and people are doesn't missing, seem dangerous because there's doesn't. no pitchfork and and mm -hmm. a cape flying yeah. behind them. And They're people are missing people. their family. They want to see their families again. And how comforting it is to hear that you can talk to them again and that they're they're only. Um, a few vibrations away. Yeah, in fact, uh, in mm -hmm. fact, uh, there's a uh, there's a medium over in South Africa that uh, that claims that she even channels dead pets uh, for oh people who miss their pets. That's the first. <laughs> and she, I heard that she, one. she claims she claims that that man is spirit and there is no death. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. In the scriptures, mm -hmm. the first lie. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. Expressing himself through, she says, man is spirit expresses, expressing himself through a physical body in his life on this earthly plane, as they call it, where he will return again. Well, the Bible says you're going to return to dust because that's where you came from. Right. You're not going to go off in some conscious spirit. And we'll, you know, that's clearly what the, so here we have these completely Upside down. That's what these things teach. They they turn the worldview mm -hmm. for the believer upside down, mm -hmm. and right becomes wrong, and wrong mm -hmm. becomes right, and they both. And, and you you made a comment, Ken, uh, that so often the concern for the Christian shouldn't be the immediate sense of danger, mm -hmm. but the cons the biggest concern should be that that maybe ten percent of what we're seeing is error, and maybe ninety percent. It seems harmless. Yeah, there's a hook in it. You know, that's that's what I end up 
noticing about it all, I, I want to touch on one thing in that when people see mediums or they see these people on TV, you expect to see them as possessed or, you know, mm. long hair and coming out from the tombs <laughs> right. like the biblical account. But that's the part how Satan plays with our minds. Yeah. Uh, we had somebody, I just remembering somebody in Palau that had set up a haunted house thing. And he said, hey, bring your kids. And we're like, you know, we, we kind of stay away from that. He's like, why? He says, I'm not possessed. Look. You know, that's the that's the mentality that yeah. they think, OK, we can dabble in all of this, but it doesn't uh, there, there's doesn't no long term effect. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think that's very dangerous because in there there is a hook that mm-hmm. that he, he he wants control. He wants to mess with your life. And this, these are the ways that he gets into it. You know, in fact, the 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 the, the number of angles the devil is using. Uh, the next one is on Wicca or witchcraft, which which is kind of interesting. They're, they have a term called neo-paganism in this whole area. And there's this there's an article that came out a, a couple of years ago on Halloween called Real Witches Try to Break Old Myths. Mm-hmm. And uh, this idea that it, it, Wicca is the modern name for witchcraft. Right. And uh, they actually claim that they, um, that they don't worship the devil. They say witchcraft has little relationship with Satanism, little to no relationship with Satanism. And uh, they're considered pagans because they believe in several nature gods instead of a single god. Now, uh, they refer to Christians as people of the book. And uh, they actually see themselves as having a life advantage over believers like us because there's not this, there's not this list of rules they have to keep. Mm-hmm. In fact, life to them is an adventure because mm-hmm. as they experience it, they create their own code of ethics for living. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? You Sounds know. pretty creative, doesn't it, yes. for, for the young adults that are... In fact, oh, neo-paganism yeah. is the, one of the fastest growing uh, forms of belief systems in our country today and around the world, actually. Mm-hmm. I think they espouse really wholesome teaching, taking care of the earth, yeah. and taking care of your environment. Mm-hmm. I've heard... You know why? Connection. It seems to be because it's based upon sensory... You know, it's based upon what I can see. I, I can see the spirit. I can talk. The spirit talks to me. We had a student in Palau that uh, since eight, the year eight, since she was eight years old, she got on the web. She learned how to communicate with the spirits, and uh, from China, didn't know anything about God. But that was her. She's like, why should I give it up? It benefits me. Mm-hmm. And then I had her hold out her wrist, and, and where she had sliced her wrist with a with a cross. And I said, this is the reason why you get it up. Give it up. Because he wants to kill you. The spirit had told her, you need to join me. So there, there, is, a, there is a side of it where um, the devil knows that if he can continue on, people want to see, they want to feel, they don't want faith. They don't want to believe in the unseen. Mm-hmm. And that's the, that's the appeal of it, but that's the danger of it. Wow, Ken, that sounds pretty scary. It sounds like there's different tactics going on around the world. Julie, what do you think about what the devil's doing around the world and in, in tricking people? In living in different countries, we lived in Palau, in Thailand, and then in the States, we can at least speak for those. In the States, Satan is so quiet. Mm. He acts like he's not even around. Mm. So we don't need him. We don't need mm. God, anything. But living overseas with a different religion foundation, he is very, very active. He's kind of in your face over there? Very much. And I have wow. a story to tell you about that. Well, that sounds great. Listeners, we hope you'll stay with us. You're listening to Hope on Fire, relevant talk radio for young adults. Welcome back to Hope on Fire, relevant talk radio for young adults. Our topic today is Supernatural Encounters, Part 2. And uh, with me here on the program are Ken and Julie Norton. Uh, really glad to have you all on our broadcast today. Thank you. And also my co-host, Sabine Vitel. It's great to have you. Thanks. We were talking before the break about the different tactics the devil is using around the world to, to uh, deceive uh, people, even believers. And, and before we went out of the break, you mentioned uh, something that happened in Thailand with one of your students. Why don't you share that? Yes, Ken and I were teaching in a language school, so we had professionals, we had children, and one of my classes, I have a police officer, and one night he came, and he he was so scared, and usually police officers, you know, they're known to be so brave, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I said, what, what's happening, and he said, well, last night, I had something knock on my window, and I said, well, tell me about it, she said, well, 
two days ago, we investigated an accident, and um, there was an abandoned car. Someone had hit an abandoned car on the side of the road, and inside they found a person wrapped in a blanket, and, it, and she was obviously dead. And they're trying to investigate what happened to this person. And this person, the spirit, came and knocked on my window. And when I went to the window, oh, the spirit said, please help me find the person who killed me so that my spirit can rest in the grave. Wow. Mm -hmm. And he said, I can't sleep by myself now. Wow. And uh, so it's these kind of things that I was trying to show him the Christian side of it, of not having to be afraid because Jesus, God can be on your side. Mm -hmm. But this is what the, these people live with every single day is this fear or respect or both of the spirit world because mm -hmm. it's very, very alive. They see them happen. They see them. I want to bring up one, one article that I saw uh, last year that was very telling. There are, there's, a, there's a huge growth uh, in Africa and I think other countries as well where people will be converted to Christianity, but then they don't let go of some of the magic and other uh, uh, occult practices that they, uh, that they lived with prior to meeting Christ. Mm. And, uh, and it's interesting, the, uh, the article stated that, uh, that, uh, that, that people basically casting a spell is much easier than prayer and having to wait on God, which always takes more time. Mm. Uh, mixing the two religions seems to be sort of a, a, a big problem, actually, over there. Uh, it seems to me that, that, that that's maybe another avenue the devil is using to, you know, introduce them to Christ, but yet waiting on God. Come on, what are you talking about? I can get, I can get answers for my needs if I throw some potion in the, uh, in the oven. What do you think about that? We experienced that in Palau also. They have a... Uh, it's called Modek Nye. Mm -hmm. religion there and it's also with the witch doctor and all okay. that and even though they're christian if my mm -hmm. husband or my wife is sick they go if the it does if the prayer doesn't quite work fast enough i'm going to go to the witch doctor and and do a little something to see mm -hmm. if it'll make but yet better. they you know they worship jesus they mm -hmm. they meet in churches i mean they they're very much feel them of themselves as Christians, but yet they've woven this from their ancestor worship and all of that. They've woven it into their Christianity. Wow. Hmm. Well, let's talk about the tangible experience. You brought that up, Ken, earlier versus God's method, the concept of real faith and what God is calling people and, and maybe, maybe not more challenging than at any point in the world's history because the Bible is very clear that witchcraft and the occult is abomination. Mm -hmm. That's right. um, mm -hmm. what, is it, what is it that you feel on your heart that you want to share about God's method and how that's really the big conflict going on, isn't it? Waiting on God and having, what is faith, really? You know, we don't have time today to go into my wife and I, our experiences with demonic possession and in, in praying for people and in, in talking to the evil spirits and them talking to us and yelling at us and cursing at us and all that. Um, it was after one of those experiences where uh, we, this was a totally new realm. And we, I mean, you know, you grow up in the church, yeah. but you never, nothing like this happens. You don't mm -hmm. take Exorcism 101 in college. I mean, this is <laughs> something so. that, no, you know, so we, I, we became interested and we went yeah. to the Christian bookstore. We got books about people that had been in Satanism, had been in Wicca, had been in these things and had become Christian. And we began to read about it to try to figure out what is, what is this? Even though, of course, it, you know, the story's in their Bible. Um, it was after I finished, I don't remember the second or third book one morning and I was having my devotions and I just all of a sudden had this deep impression that the Lord was saying, why are you learning about this mm. when you don't even know me that well? Mm -hmm. Wow. And see, it all of a sudden triggered that this was something you could feel. You can hear the spirit. You can see the miraculous things happening. And it was very interesting. It was very drawing to us. Yeah. But, but faith on the other hand, as, mm -hmm. as Hebrews 11 says, faith is a substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not, not seen. seen. Mm -hmm. So it, it just to go back to, well, you know, praying to a God that, you know, doesn't talk. Hello, Ken. You know, he doesn't do kind of those kind of not things. Not the way we would like. No, right. yeah. Like, you know, we'd hope <laughs> it happened, but he's very active, but you, it's, it's through the faith and not through the sensory, sensories. And so I, I, I found that to be a challenge, but mm -hmm. thankful. I want you, I want you mm -hmm. to also share... <clears throat> This was, this was very insightful in planning for this program. Uh, your sense and belief of the reasons why God doesn't describe the devil uh, mm. in the scriptures uh, more than maybe twice. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your thoughts on, on some of the scripture and wisdom that God showed you in that? 
that was the thing that um, in continuing after our demonic experiences that the Lord really impressed upon us was how many times is Satan or the forces of darkness described in Scripture? I mean, you've got two major passages. You've got Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12. You've got Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 12. Those are the only places that describe Satan in detail. Mm -hmm. You've got Revelation 12, which talks about his fall. Ephesians chapter 6 talks about the hierarchy of darkness. That's it. Why? Because... That's a very good question. Yeah, good, yes. And, Tell and us. I, I went for the answer, <laughs> like, and I found Paul has the answer. And, and in Romans chapter 16, Paul says, be wise about what is innocent. Mm -hmm. uh, no, good. yeah, by wise about what is good, good and be simple about what is evil. And that's the principle that I believe goes into all the... the, the should I watch Harry Potter? Should mm -hmm. I read the book? The Bible says, be wise about what is good. Be simple about what is evil. And That's simple the point. meaning innocent. That's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Don't wow. be wise about it. So, hey, I can't sit here and tell you I've watched right. Harry Potter. Or I can't tell you I've read right. all this. I don't even know who these people are. Right. <laughs> because we stayed away from it after. Well, there's another, there's another truth from Paul that you referenced as well. Don't defile your body, mm. right? Mm -hmm. Which, uh, you, and you made a great comment. A lot of people into the health message mm. who are vegetarian and keep their sugar down and don't eat fried foods, uh -huh. we think so much about the application of the truth to mm -hmm. that part of your life. But the spiritual aspect of not defiling your body uh, is a powerful witness. Mm -hmm. You're here. sitting on the couch eating celery and carrots and watching medium. Okay, well, but I'm, I'm not defiling my body. But guess what? Your mind, is the, your mind is the temple. That's where the Holy Spirit dwells and uses us. So by bringing that in, you are defiling the temple of God just as much as if you were eating a... I well, think something, something else. Yeah. Well, what would you say to somebody who's listening right now and saying, well, how will I know that I'm being deceived or led in the, in the wrong path and that the devil is, is there and it's is an evil uh, presence? Um, maybe some would say, well, I will know when I, <laughs> when the yeah. devil appears, mm. but because it's, it, you, you say it's so subtle, uh, how do we then train, how would one train their minds to, to be in tune to that? You can't, I, see, well, you can't see it on radio, but I'm holding my Bible. All right. <laughs> That's it. All right. Well, you know, it, and, and I'm glad you did that, Ken, because mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit impressed me again to come back to the idea of studying counterfeits versus the genuine. Mm -hmm. You know, we can, we can study Hinduism. We can study Buddhism. Mm -hmm. I lived in Korea, and I learned a lot about Buddhism. And so many believers think we should study the things exactly. so that we can educate ourselves and being able to witness to mm -hmm. people who might live in the occult or do these things. But... You study the you study the genuine enough so that you'll always recognize the counterfeit. Mm. So maybe right. the message today, more than anything, for young adults who are listening or watching mm -hmm. this program, mm -hmm. is uh, st study the genuine word yeah. of God. Mm. Uh, in mm -hmm. fact, Second, Second Thessalonians says that uh, that the people perished because they refused to love the mm -hmm. truth. And mm -hmm. the Bible says Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And that's so powerful to me. Uh, that that he just calls us to come. He doesn't use the devil's tactics. Mm. Mm. That's right. I think even it's Jesus is such a good example here on earth when he was interacting with someone that was possessed or even Satan himself. Mm -hmm. He never sat and had a conversation with him. He never engaged mm -hmm. in looking at it. He good told point. them to be silent if good they were point. speaking, and he cast cast them out. Mm -hmm. And even in speaking with Satan, um, in the and when he was in the mm -hmm. wilderness, mm -hmm. he spoke to him through scripture because he knew the scripture and he could recognize the falsehood where maybe some of us would not have recognized it because we're not as familiar with the word of God. Mm -hmm. So I think the principles that are laid up in scripture is true. If we, if we study the, the word of God. Mm -hmm. And I think before for myself, when I, before I read a book or, or the things that I put into my mind, I always pray. Mm -hmm. I do. It's, it may sound a little, a little weird, but I pray and I ask the Lord, please impress my mind mm -hmm. if things are true or things are not because I want to only put into my my ears or my eyes my mind things that are pure mm -hmm. yes amen okay. and you know I want to affirm the people out there listening today who may have lost loved ones people that are hurting um, and and, and th th this is one of the devil's greatest tools to reach out to people when they're hurting they're vulnerable mm -hmm. that's right and to call out to God and ask why in fact God is the greatest scoundrel so who gets blamed for the death of the loved ones that, that mm -hmm. we used to be with mm -hmm. and the devil has a heyday with that and I just want to affirm for the people who are feeling grief 
God knows where you are. Yes, mm-hmm. that's and right. uh, just know that you know we're going to be doing a program, an upcoming program on, on death, because we feel like it, it requires a whole program to mm-hmm. just talk about that and enter into what God's Word has to say about the topic. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, but, but, you know, going beyond the law of exposure, by beholding we become changed. Yes. Ken, you made a comment just really quick before we close out here. You, you mentioned that it even be, goes beyond the law of exposure. Mm. It goes beyond uh, by beholding we become changed in that the spiritual principle that I find and through our experiences is that when you say, I'm going to be entertained by this, then you are telling the devil, you I, like, mm-hmm. I like what you got mm-hmm. and, and I want to be a part of it. That's really, and he has then the right to come and to harass you and mess with your life. And none of us want that. No. Well, thank you all for joining me today on this program. You know, anytime we make emotional religious experiences or various signs and wonders, the basis of our faith, we open up the floodgates to every sort of delusion. Without a love for truth and a mental storehouse filled with God's word, we cannot discern error. All of our religious experiences must be verified by scripture. Scripture is not proved by them. We pray that you'll open up your heart right now to Jesus, who's the way, the truth, and the life, that you'll close your eyes and ears to anything getting in the way of his still small voice. You see, friend, he won't compete for your attention like the devil's counterfeits will. In fact, he waits patiently right now at your heart's door. In Revelation 3, verse 20, he says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens that door, I'll come in and we'll have a meal together. That's the supernatural encounter I want. What about you? Hope on Fire is produced by Livestreams Media, a listener-supported ministry. To download a free copy of today's program or be a part of our social network, please visit our website at hopeonfire.org. You may also contact us by writing to Lifestreams Media, P.O. Box 608-513, Orlando, Florida, 32860. Once again, that's Lifestreams Media, P.O. Box 608-513, Orlando, Florida, 32860 or online at hopeonfire.org. Thank you so much for your letters and continued support. Until next time, may God set your hope on fire.